the fertilization process in cattle is the fusion of the male sperm and the female egg to form one single cell, the zygote. In this short video, listen to vet and AI insemination trainer Jimmy Quinn explain how the egg gets down to the womb to meet the semen. He starts by explaining and showing some healthy and not so healthy cow fallopian tubes. Tube there sits in over the ovary like a pocket. Okay, so when the follicle pops and releases the egg, and I mean that's a follicle there, not a very large one, you know, that will pop at the time of ovulation, like that. It'll rupture, the fluid will come out, and then, like a funnel, that structure picks up the egg and carries it down the fallopian tube. I mean, the egg has no propulsion system, but that tube can contract, and there's also millions of little fingers down along it that beat a current of fluid in a direction to carry the egg down towards the womb. Coming up in the other direction are the sperm that we have dropped here at the end of the cervix. So they've come from the uterine body, up the uterine horn, um, into the fallopian tube, and if all goes well, uh, they'll meet the egg about halfway down that fallopian tube to cause fertilization and the uh, development of the embryo. But if we look at these two tracts here, uh, those two cows were in, in pretty serious trouble. That, believe it or not, is a fallopian tube gone wrong. Block, blocked one. Okay, so all of a sudden, this little tin worm like structure here has transformed itself into that. And I mean, again, you know, even though the cow is a very big animal, uh, that's a tiny tube. And you can imagine how small the actual cavity down the center of that tube is. Tiny. So it doesn't take a whole lot to block it, and that's exactly what has happened there as a result of infection. Okay, so that's fine, but what happens on the ovary once the egg is released to maintain pregnancy? In this next short clip, Jimmy explains how the corpus luteum is developed and is vital to produce progesterone and maintain pregnancy. Stuck to the wall of that then is the egg, the oocyte. And that's about the size of a follicle on the day of heat, about two centimetres. Okay, so when our, our cow is on heat, she'll have a follicle up on either the left or the right ovary. 24 hours after she starts to stand, that follicle ruptures like a blister, liquid comes out, egg separates from the wall of it, and it starts to travel down the fallopian tube that we saw there a minute ago. So I mean, just to replicate ovulation there now, pop, okay? That's what happens. Um, that structure uh, ruptures, and what you're left with is a cavity on the ovary, just like that. The next thing that happens is the cells on the lining of that cavity start to multiply, they start to fill in the cavity, and over the next few days they begin to form that structure there, do you see it? Uh, which is called a corpus luteum. And again, the name tells you what it is. Corpus is body and luteum is yellow. So that's a yellow body. How does it do that? It, do, it does that by producing the hormone progesterone. Okay, <coughs> so what that is, is a little hormone factory. See the colour of it? Okay, yellow body, corpus luteum. Uh, it's that colour because there's a lot of carotene and vitamin A in it. Okay. So there you have it. The cow must recognise pregnancy between day 16 to 17 or the uterus will produce prostaglandin F2 alpha, which will regress the corpus luteum. If the corpus luteum regresses, circulating progesterone levels drop and the embryo cannot implant. If the embryo died, or if the cow fails to recognise a pregnancy, the corpus luteum will regress normally and the cow will return to heat at about 20 days, 21 days after mating. Farmers will often inject maiden heifers or cows with prostaglandin, which brings the animal into heat once there is a corpus luteum present, i.e. if the cow or heifer is cycling. Often the maiden heifer or cow is not cycling and the injection of PG is no good. So that's all fine, but what can farmers doing DIY AI do to improve the chances of fertilization? Jimmy explained three tips that could improve conception rates. The first tool he talked about was metric checking cows that are at least four weeks calved. This allows you to identify and potentially clean or wash out dirty cows. Metricure is the licensed product in Ireland for washouts and Jimmy recommended using a stainless steel rod to get the solution into the cow. But if a cow is very dirty, or if she is sick and off farm, then he said injectable antibiotics are the best treatment. Listen to Jimmy explain how to metric check. 
vagina, cervix stops us, pull back along the vaginal floor, check the cup. Okay? Anything with pus, and particularly pus with a smell, you identify them as uh, candidates for being washed out. The second important factor Jimmy talked about was equipment. Have a good storage tank for AI straws and thaw straws properly. First, the tank. The worst surprise of all is to come out some morning, pull the cork, nothing. Those grey Taylor Hortons give me the shivers now when I see them, okay? Because the first thing that tells me is that tank is 20 to 30 years old. In terms of thawing AI straws, Jimmy explains that of course some farmers succeed without thawing, but it's not best practice. Listen to him explain the difference between not thawing and thawing and the options for thawing equipment. And uh, it's the same with thawing semen. So have a system in place that you have warm, clean water uh, for thawing your straws. So, I mean, what is that system? You know, your deluxe version is one of these fellas. Uh, 250 euros. Uh, or you can have the 12 volt one that will run in a car, which is a bit cheaper, about 200 euros. I'd say the only advantage of them is if you have an out farm where hot water is an issue. Otherwise, they're an expensive toy. You know, I mean, that's half the price of the can. Um, I mean, again, you know, nice wide mouth flask or a, a topaz co coffee mug or whatever. Easy to read thermometer. Them alcohol ones are the best, you know, they're good long column on them. And finally, the five minute lifespan and AI straw handling. Jimmy maintains that straws should not be thawed for greater than five minutes in water at 30 degrees. This means you must act fast if AIing a number of cows or else don't thaw too many straws together. Listen to Jimmy explain how to select straw from, straws from the tank and how to handle them once thawed out and on the way to the cow in heat. Because I mean again if you think about it, it's a very small volume of liquid with a huge surface area around it. Thin little column of liquid up the middle of the straw. Every time you wipe that, you're thawing a layer of semen on the inside of the straw. Once you thaw them and re-immerse them, that's then dead. So, I mean, the more times that is done, you will go from 50% live to 40 to 30, and eventually you will end up with so many dead sperm inside in the straw that it will not put cows in half. The first thing you have to do is dry it. Okay? Um, take it out dry it because water again yeah. highly spermicidal and it'll rust your gun. Um, the next thing um, you have to do, you're all familiar with the two ends of the straw, the, the open mm. cotton plugged end and the crimped end. <laughs> so it's probably worth you know, holding it upright, cotton end down, crimped end up and just give it a flick uh, to make sure the air bubble is up at the top of the straw. I mean the companies don't overfill them. There's usually a quarter of an inch of air at the end of the straw. Sometimes that bubble goes down to the semen and it brings the semen up to the end and you're, you're losing semen by cutting it. So always hold your straw up, give it a flick, then down into the gun. Um, uh, you know, I suppose the most brainless one of all like, is guns down the welling. You know, you take a swab, you swab the bottom inside of a wellington and culture it and it'll frighten you. You have bacteria, yeasts, everything you don't want on, on a gun. Okay, so I mean, that should not be tolerated. And that's your bag of sheets on the farm. Two ends to the bag. You'd be surprised how many people cut that end and are pulling them out by the tips. No reason to. Cut that end, pull them out here. You know, you should not be doing any handling up here. Completely unnecessary. Do all your handling down here on the, on, on the sheet. To keep that portion that's going into the body of the womb spotlessly clean. We've, we, we've our sheath on the gun then and we're ready to go. How should we keep that gun? Well, you know, day like today, ambient temperature is not an issue. But on days not like today, and certainly during the winter, temperature control is a big issue. So the last thing you need to do is straw 35 degrees into our nice warm gun. And the next thing, you know, out around the yard on a, a winter's morning with the wind whistling past the gun. You will do significant damage to the, the semen. By, by dropping the temperature like that. So I mean probably the handiest way is use your body heat and um, into a glove down your back. Uh, number one, the glove is spotlessly clean and sterile. The heat using the extruding the plastic. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, you're, you now have a clean, warm gun and two free hands. Okay. Um, small bit here, five minutes gone, but I, I, I think it's worth doing. Um, if you don't want to use those fellas, what you can use are these, specifically for the, that job. They're, they're called a chemise, which is the friend, French for a shirt. They're a sanitary sleeve or a sanitary shirt. That's what it does. Okay. Down your back. Gun is spotlessly clean. Gun is warm, ready to go. The other advantage of using them is they allow the tip of that gun to get into the womb while remaining spotlessly clean. And what I mean by that is I can come along to AI my cow, I leave that sheath in place, I go up through the vagina, when I get to the front of her cervix, I do that. In through the cervix, tip of that gun now, spotlessly clean. And I mean, you know, one thing you'll be aware of, if you've cows on grass in the spring, you'll have some cows with very dirty vagina. They're dunging, particularly if their conformation is bad, they're dunging down across the lips, they will suck some of that dung into the vagina. You know, you're there with your piece of blue towel, you get some of it off, but you know in there where you can't get with your bit of towel. Yeah, oh, you brought it in the gun to, to the worst possible place you could be bringing dung. 